The easiest way to get on Netflix is just to kill somebody. You go out and kill two people, I guarantee you, you're getting a, a docu-series. You're getting an eight-part docu-series, your family's getting rich. <laughs> cares 13 we're rolling we're episode lucky 13 already fuck incredible feels like just yesterday i was starting this you know it's cool to get 13 and soon we're gonna have 100 and 100 subs 100 million fucking subs brick by brick baby we're building this thing back in the toronto zoo fucking being an nba champion repping hard right now five game win streak no big deal East is wide open, too. I do not trust Giannis in the box whatsoever. The stand around and watch Giannis dunk on everybody offense, not going to work in the playoffs. That's my prediction. But, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of fucking winter dick season. January is, you know, end of January is usually a tough month. Weather's cold and cruel. Everybody's thick from the holidays. Everyone's poor. Kind of just going, what are we doing here, you know? Why are we here? Which a, a lot of people probably think about all the time but even more in the winter so this is why i got the who cares podcast have a fucking silly goose of a time delia and have a fucking laugh that's why we're here i'm bringing you heat for you to fucking giggle at home while you're doing your makeup while you're having a pregame, while you're you know maybe jerking off in the other room who knows that's why i'm here man i'm bringing it for you but uh my neighbor died the other day so that was cool that was a big exciting day Bunch of, it, was, it was like 3 in the morning. A bunch of fucking cops. Everybody pulled up. The whole squadron in Brantford. Like, everybody pulled up. Just for some old guy who died, you know? I never met him, but gave, you know, the neighbor something to talk about. I saw him once in the summer, and he was trying to pull his RV, like, in uh, back his RV in. Well, this is like a narrow street. And it literally took the guy like an hour and a half. He was freaking out and just fuck, fuck, and telling his wife to shut the fuck up and just losing it. And now he's dead, so, you know, it's my only memory with him, but I hope his wife's okay or whatever. I saw her open the door when I run, came and she was all like, you know, shook up. It's tough to see. But that's a nice, happy way to start the pod. <laughs> but that's all old people talk about, too, eh? Like, I was at a coffee shop today and there was uh, two groups of old people. There's two old guys and then these two old grandmas. And literally all they talk about is death. That's all. Like, it's just, okay, yeah, but Betty's a fucking 106 years old now. She's still making niche for the church. And all good for, yeah, but Susan died. You know, she had dementia and didn't know her name and then walked off a cliff. And you're like, oh, okay, well. And they're both just sitting there. And I think old people talk about death. One, because they're, like, close to it. And two, because, like, there's really nothing else happening. They're not doing anything now. And three, because I think it makes them feel better about themselves a little bit. Because they're like, oh, we're still here. We're still having a conversation. We're still doing the damn thing, you know? So it's kind of a three-pronged attack. It's just my, you know, you know, armchair expert opinion. But it's weird how that's all they talk about. A lot of people aren't good at storytelling, though. Like, in life, most people are boring and not funny. So it's rare to find somebody who's good at storytelling and can entertain you. Most people just, like, especially chicks, man. It's so hard to find a chick that can tell a good story. Like, chicks tell stories like fucking children. Like, I, like they go, yeah, okay, so, we, so we're getting ready, right? And then, okay, then I check my phone, and then Betty texts me about uh, Nathan, and then, so then I called Nathan, but then I go outside, and, and we started talking about um, this documentary we saw on Netflix, and then, but then Nathan wasn't there, and then later on, he showed up after we came home, but then when we were not home, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Tell me the story. Say this happened. There's a beginning. There's a middle part. There's an ending. Don't turn this into fucking Tarantino X and give me some gobbledygoo about nothing. That's what a podcast is for. <laughs> Leave it to me to do that. I don't need you switching the details up talking about nothing, <laughs> which is what most people and almost you know what? I'm going to say it. Every chick I've ever met in my life, every fucking woman I've met in my life could not tell you a story from beginning to end that actually makes sense. I'm not saying there's women out there that cannot do this. I'm sure there are. Most, and all the ones I've met, simply can't. And I think it's because women care more about the emotions of it 
than the X's and O's of a good story. Where guys are like, okay, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna tell a story. It's gonna be funny here. It's gonna be a dick joke here. I'm gonna look cool here. Where girls are just like, yeah, but I was, I was kind of feeling like, I was kind of feeling this, and then it's like, how are we here? Now we're way the fuck over here. Like, what are you talking about? It's like literally like a child telling you a story. Tom Segura has an unbelievable bit in one of his specials about it. What a kid telling a story. He's like, yeah, so he has the blue cup and the yellow cup. It's like, that's literally how it is with chicks. And I think like 90% of this channel is dudes. But if it if you even know a chick that can tell a good story, I'll give her a million dollars. I'll literally give her a million dollars. DM me. I'll give her a million doll hairs. But I've never seen it. I want it. And a lot of women comedians are... are it's tough, you know. I'm gonna be that guy who's like, "Oh, women aren't funny," because there definitely are funny women, but a lot of them are tough. I don't know; they're on a different frequency, you know. And they're funny to chicks, but to guys, it's kind of like, "What's going on here?" It's strange. It's like a weird. Like I think Whitney Cummings is really funny. I watch her specials; she's hot and she's funny. But I saw like some of uh, Eliza Schlesinger's stuff, and it's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" But girls love it. Girls eat it up. That's one thing that's cool about today is that like back in the day it was like there's one or two of like any industry and there's only like one or two people to be a fan of where now everything's so niche that like every little group or subgroup has their person you know it's like oh I love that person it's not like oh I need everybody to love me no no, no. you just need a certain amount of people to love you so that's a cool time to be alive I was having this debate with uh I think it was my cousin Bearbutt, but he's like, oh yeah, music was better back in the day. I was like, well, I think music is the best now because we can listen to anything. We have Spotify with music, so every time ever we have access to. Where back then it was like, oh, I got a vinyl, I got a CD, like that's it. Where now you have everything. So you can be like, oh, modern pop music I don't like. But as far as overall like time period, you have access to fucking everything, which is, I think, like incredible. Like The world's never seen this before. Well, so we got it. We'll do it. We'll keep it brief. Keep it brief Friday one. Oh, I saw online. Uh, there's this like variety store in Brantford giving out fentanyl test strips to people downtown, right? Because as the library's down there, everyone's just fucking ODing and having a sick time. But they're handing out free fentanyl test strips. Okay, that's a good, it's like a good hearted thing. Like, oh, test your drugs. Hopefully you don't OD a fentanyl. The type of person that's doing drugs doesn't have time to test them out on your kid. Who the fuck buys a bag of cocaine and goes, all right, guys, before we start blasting our faces with this fucking snow, let's, let's get a science kit out and test it to make sure it's pure and make sure we don't OD, okay? And everyone goes, yeah, okay. Like, who do you think you're dealing with? You're dealing with people who want to grab a cheap bag, fucking dump it down their nostril, and run through a wall. And that's Brantford, and I respect that, okay? I'll meet in the library. But it's fucking... I don't know, it's like a good-natured thing that just, you know, isn't fucking real. And Like, in real life, it doesn't have any fucking weight. It's like, you know what? Fentanyl's fucked up, you know? Doing coke during the fentanyl era is like having raw sex during the AIDS epidemic. It's fucking risky business, let me tell you. Not that I would know, but I know some people, you know. But it's fucking scary, man, that fentanyl. Take down an elephant, you know. Really fucked up. I lied to my... This is so fucked up. I lied to my... Uh, one of my film profs back in the day. I missed like a month of classes just because... I think the class was like Thursday night, so I would just like go to the bar or something, and I just wasn't going. But I actually liked it. it. turned out to be one of my favorite classes ever, but I was just being a fucking idiot. So I go there, I'm a month, maybe even two months behind. And I'm like, hey, like, is there any way I can kind of, you know, like, ca get caught up and, you know, sh get this credit? He's like, I don't know, like, maybe, like, why, why haven't you been here, obviously? And I'm like, well... You know, my buddy back, you know, back home, he, you know, he OD'd on fentanyl, so it's just been, like, a tough time, and it's, you know, I haven't really come to class and shit. And, like, he bought it, he felt really bad for me, and I got, like, a 90 in that class. But let me tell you something, I felt like a real scumbag about it, because, and honestly, I, I just screwed myself, because that was one of my favorite classes, and he's an unbelievable prof, but I should, I, you know, 
It was a shitty lie. I felt bad about it, but what can you do? Life goes on, I guess. Uh, we're going to introduce a new segment on the pod called Watch List. It's going to be just me talking about shit I watched because I'm balls deep in everything, including your mom. <laughs> so stupid. But uh, as many of you know, I, last podcast, I was looking forward to seeing Bad Boys 3. So I've seen it now. Incredible. Fucking awesome, man. A lot of these type of movies suck. Like, I don't like shitty action movies that like aren't funny. Bad Boys, the two first two were sick. This one's dope as fuck. It's funny. Um, they probably did do it a little bit too late, but it's. I think it was good. The story was great. I fucking love it, dude. The music. There's a couple bangers on it. Everything I wanted in a movie. There's this. Uh, there's this fucking Asian kid. He's like half Asian, half white, I think. Or he's just a white guy who looks a little bit Asian. And, <laughs> dude, this guy's acting ability. Okay? God bless him for getting on Bad Boys 3. One of the most unintentionally funny actors I've ever seen in my life, dude. This guy delivers the most douchey lines in the most douchey way ever. The entire movie. The entire movie, he's just sitting there trying to be cool and just fucking dropping these lines. And it's like, oh, holy fuck, like, what's happening here? What the fuck is happening now? And it's just like, it's the standard, the one problem I kind of have with this movie, everything works, it's a good movie, but it's just the fucking forced diversity down your throat. It's like, okay, we got, you know, Will Smith, we got Martin Lawrence, who's literally transformed into Big Mama at this point, and... They join this fucking team of young people. It's the, you know, the one, the love interest is this Latina chick with short hair. Kind of looks like Trinity from the Matrix. Then there's this like tech guy who's fucking this big white dude, but he's like nerdy and doesn't do anything like aggressive until the very end. Uh, there's, I think Vanessa Hudgens is in it. I'm pretty sure that was her. It's like, didn't even know she was alive still, but she's in it. She's decently hot, but I mean, kind of has that worn, like, I bet she's did a lot of drugs in her life. He kind of has that worn look to her. I still would, though. Don't get it twisted. I definitely would still take her down. Uh, then there's this Asian kid who's... Like, I can't... I gotta fucking find the name of this guy. It's absolutely... Oh, breaking. We, we got a Gary V text. We got a breaking Gary V text. <laughs> okay. If you do one thing today that you're scared of, but know is right, this text service would have been worth it all. I'm cheering for you, heart, heart, heart. Okay, what am I gonna say now? Just DM'd my crush a uh, dick pic. <laughs> All right, Gary, there you go. I did something fucking. I did something I was scared of, but I did it. Okay. Fuck, we got another in here. There's so there's so many Gary V texts. Okay, but what uh, this Asian kid? What the fuck is his name? I think he was in, like, Riverdale or something. Some, some one of the stupid Netflix shows that fucking chicks and gay dudes watch. Um, Charles Melton. <laughs> this guy, man. He's, he's like a living meme. Like, he gotta... Like, there's gotta be a highlight tape on YouTube of him just saying outrageous shit. But it's fucking hilarious. And he beefed Will Smith the whole time. Big Mike Lowry. But it was a banger of a movie. It was a, so go check that out. I don't want to spoil it. There's you know, a little bit of a twist in it, but it was sick. It was, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Um, what a review that is. I'm sick. It was sick. I'm impressed with it. <laughs> Done. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, Zion Williamson debut. So, as many of you know, Zion Williamson fucking hell is the next LeBron. He played for Duke. He had a knee injury. And last night was his big... Uh, his big, you know, debut in the NBA for the New Orleans Pelicans. Who are the New Orleans Pelicans? Like, don't even be a fucking team. Smoothie King Arena? Bye. The arena's half fucking filled, even for this. Their jerseys and color scheme are awful. It's like red and black and gold and just like Pelicans? Huh? Like, it just, it's so fucking weird. And their team is weird. Like, they have young guys who... I think Alonzo Ball, who's like, is this guy ever going to be good or just kind of be known for having a crazy dad? Brandon Ingram's balling. It's like, it's just a strange team. Uh, so anyway, Zion Williams makes his debut, right? Okay. This guy's thick as shit. <laughs> he's, 
He's at listed at 6'7", but if you see him out there, there's no way he's taller than 6 foot 5. He looks short. He looks like a chode out there. He's every bit. They have him listed at 285. That motherfucker is every bit of 300. Get, especially right now. He's every bit of 300 pounds. Me and number one pick, Zion Williamson, have the exact same build right now. Okay? And I'm a guy who used to kind of play sports in high school and want to be a comedian. He's an elite athlete. I am vanilla Zion. I'm white Zion Williamson. I've said this before. I'll say it a million times. We have the exact same build. Big shoulders, big arms. Like, oh, is this guy kind of jacked? And we can like hide our barrels. This guy, is th he's so thick. His fucking giant peach of a rump is just <laughs> lumbering up and down the court. Like, he's getting gassed within, like, one, he runs up the court, like, once, he's done. He's limping around, like, I think he's still hurt. Like, he's not even, he can't even run. Like, he's, and he's so thick. Like, I, I can't believe it. There's all these videos of him, like, a week or two ago, just, like, you know, fucking passing out on the bench, having a diabetic fucking stroke. I don't know if he's going to be good. Like, he has hops, he can dunk, and he's strong and stuff. He's a good passer. Like, he has some skills. But unless he gets in, like, game shape, like, there's no way this guy ends up being anything. Like, last night was mind-blowing to watch this guy play. It was like, he shouldn't even be in the NBA. And I know it's just a debut, and, like, uh, Mark Jackson was talking to Van Gundy during the broadcast, and was like, oh, I would have picked John Morant, who's sick for the uh, for the Grizzlies. And then he's like, who would you take? Who would you take, Van Gundy? He's like, give it two years, and I'll give you an answer. Which I agree with, because, like, just to roast a guy for having one bad game when he's, you know, coming off an injury and he's a bit out of shape, is that's not fair, and he's a rookie. And I hope he ends up being sick because he is fun to watch. But what that fucking debut last night was an all-time what-the-fuck-is-happening moment. He, like, it was tough. And they, just, they only played him in, like, four or five-minute spurts. But just seeing him out there, like, he looked like a chode. Like, he literally looked like a, He looked shorter than everybody. He just looked way bigger than everybody. He's so thick. And he's just kind of fucking... And he was gassed right away. He fucking runs really funny, too. Like, he kind of, like... He's always kind of like this. Like, he, he runs really weird. It's, like, hard to explain. You gotta see it. But he, he has, like, a, a weird gait to him. And that's what they said when he was injured. They're like, oh, we're trying to reteach him how to run and how to jump. It's like, well, that's impossible. And also, he's already an elite athlete. You can't reteach somebody how to fucking be an athlete. Like, that's not... You are what you are. He's definitely gonna lose some weight and get in shape, but... It was, uh, it was a strange debut, to say the least. Oh, another uh, another Netflix doc, because another week went by. Literally, here's the thing with Netflix. Like I said, I think an episode or two ago. If, if you kill anybody, if you're a serial killer, you will get a Netflix documentary. They put out true crime docs. Every week, there's a new one. There's Don't Fuck With Cats. There was the one where the guy claimed it was aliens and ended up jerking off that guy. What the fuck was that one? Oh, uh, Abducted in Plain Sight. That one was great. Fucking, there's, I mean, there's the Ted Bundy shit was great. There's so many. Now they got one on Aaron Hernandez. So, it, but this is my point, though. If you want to get on Netflix, I think you have to be a legend to get a comedy special there. Like, you have to be legendary. The easiest way to get on Netflix is just to kill somebody. You go out and kill two people, I guarantee you, you're getting a, a docuseries. You're getting an eight-part docuseries. Your family's getting rich. So <laughs> that's that's how it is nowadays. Which I think is fucked up that we kind of glorify these people and just go so in-depth on them. And then it's like, you know, they spend 10 minutes on the doc talking about the victim. They're like, oh, he was a good guy. Like, he never hurt anybody. He was just trying to, like, provide for his family, you know. But he got viciously fucking castrated and they cut his head off. And you're like, oh, okay, oh, poor guy. And then, like, you just get to know this killer. And you're like, you know what? I kind of feel bad for him. It's like, What? This guy's a terrible person, you know? He fucking kills people. So I don't know if it's good or healthy for us to fucking just be so deep into these docs, but they're so fucking good. And everybody fucking gets hyped up about them. And they're like, no, no, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. And the moment you flick it on, like the moment you turn Netflix on, it's on your like, main screen, and you're like, okay, I'm going to check it out. And then you watch five minutes, the guy you hooked for fucking three hours. And that's just how it is, you know? But I'm watching this Aaron Hernandez doc, Inside the Mind of Aaron. What a fucking life this guy lived, man. The funniest was, there's this really weird guy who kept talking. He's like, yeah, him and I were... I only watched episode one. 
She was like, yeah, him and I were like the quarterback tight end. Like we were the fucking cool kids in high school. We showed up, fucking smoked weed, fucking everybody thought we were sick. You know, that quarterback tight end duo. And you're like, this guy is fucking weird, man. He's like, why is this guy fucked? And then later on, it's just like, yeah, you know, after school, we'd like get together and like, uh, you know, fuck. And you're like, what? <laughs> you're like, where did that come from? I totally forgot that Aaron Hernandez was gay. And Look at this guy, so nowhere. Yeah, so we'd get together and fuck, and you're like, what is happening here? Like, he's just dropping the bomb on me, and then his dad shows up, and he's like, just some fat American guy. He's like, yeah, you know, my son was a big football player, and, you know, I probably would have shamed him if he was gay back then, but I feel bad. Now he's out of the closet, and I'm happy for him, you know? And the gay guy's like, yeah, you know, me and Aaron were just looking back on it. We were casually dating, but we couldn't really tell people because, like I said, we're the quarterback tight end duo. We're the cool kids in, in school, you know? And we probably made fun of other gay people. And you're like, what? It's like, yeah, we just kind of explore each other and hang out and, like, not want to get caught, you know? And you're like, dude, there's been plenty of times in high school I was with my buddies and, like, you know, we went out and, you know, we struck out. We didn't get any chicks. And we just went back to someone's house, like, ordered a pizza and called it a night. Let me tell you something. There was never a night, at least from my perspective that I can remember, where we were just sitting around and we go, I'm going to suck that guy's cock right now. I'm going to explore this guy. I'm going to explore my buddy's asshole right now. I'm going to peel his peach back and fucking dive in there. That never happened. Now, maybe because it wasn't, you know, I, it wasn't a quarterback tight end duo, but I've never just explored my buddy's anus just out of curiosity, you know? But, and then his, uh, oh, camera zooming. And then, uh, his dad was like a strict, disciplinarian like beat up his mom and shit and he kept getting he like you know he's getting concussions even in high school you know and it's it was it's a good doc i'm looking forward to it but he was definitely a psycho and a, a ton of stuff you know contributed to it but uh yeah and they're showing pictures of this guy in grade like eight and nine looks like he's 40 like and then him in high school playing against other people he looks like, like he looks the exact same as he, as he did in the nfl when he was like 14 like, so to be an elite athlete is just, like, it's just a different, I can't like a different creature. Like, not even a man amongst boys, a fucking, like, just a man's man amongst boys. <laughs> I guess he was really a man amongst boys when he was drilling his quarterback's asshole before the game. So, good on him, I guess, you know, but. And then he had this chick he had a kid with who the, the quarterback was like, yeah, it's common for gay guys to do that just to kind of hide it. But, like, I always knew he liked me. And you're like, okay. And, and his chick was so loyal, like hid the murder weapon, wouldn't say, wouldn't say a fucking peep in court. She was a fucking ride or die bitch. The type of girl you want in your life. She had beautiful, like green eyes. I'd probably fuck her, but not now, obviously. Well, actually probably better to fuck her now because Aaron couldn't murder you, but and I'll probably never see her in my life and get that opportunity, but, uh, a real ride or die, a real Stan. And that's what you need in life. Don't get this fucking, you know, chick who flirts with half half the fucking bar. She's giving eyes to your buddy. Get the ride or die bitch where you can be like, you know what? There's something behind that wall. I need you to not ask a fucking question. Throw it in a bag and go get, get the fuck out of here. And she goes, yes, sir. That's the chick you need, man. That's the chick you fucking need in life. You need people like that. I'm looking forward to I'm going to watch the other two episodes tonight, but it's pretty fucking good. What time do we got, Frankie? 23. Unnecessary shoutouts. We only got one here because the guy's bugging the shit out of me and he's a huge fan of the pod. He's getting ready to compete in, I think, May at his first bodybuilding show. Mikey Dorian out there. He's up in Barry. He's doing the damn thing. He's eating chicken and rice every fucking day. He's disciplined. He's trying to get fucking huge like his big brother. God bless him. Unnecessary shoutout your way. It's only one we got. We haven't done those in a while, but... He's, uh, he's a real big fan, so fucking the kid earned it. Um, well, we'll do a little sports talk and then get in a broad corner and we'll wrap the episode. But, uh, so last week was a big Connor fight and I made a video of it where I kept saying UFC 241 when it was 246. Sue me. Who gives a fuck? I've never, I've never been a numbers guy. I think my analysis is pretty good on it. But I was thinking about this, like, at what point... Do we get in society where we just start throwing fucking weapons in the cage? Like, if a fight's boring, right? And they're, like, just kind of holding on each other or doing nothing. 
at what point do we just allow weaponry into the octagon? And I know it sounds crazy at first, but just hear me out on this, okay? I'm not, nothing crazy, right? So let's say it's a five round title fight. First round, you throw in, you know, maybe a chair, maybe a hammer, something, nah, hammer's a little shit, hammer's second round. First round, throw in a chair, maybe a binder, just keep it light. Um, second round, hammer. Third round, maybe we got, you know, maybe a knife, maybe a sword, something intense. Fourth round, I think you just throw a gun in there <laughs> and see what happens. Fifth round, fifth round, I don't know. I think, I, don't, I think it never goes to the fifth round. I think fifth round, maybe you just throw another person in there. And then they can kind of maybe talk to them and maybe get them on their side so they can like destroy the other guy. So yeah, fifth round would be a person. So first round, light. Throw, you know, a binder, maybe a chair. Second round, hammer. I'm thinking like a Triple H style hammer. Third round, I need weaponry. I need a sharp, I need a samurai sword. Right out of Pulp Fiction, I need a fucking Hanzo Hattori samurai sword. Fourth round, I need a fucking gun. Not a shotgun, not a machine gun, just a normal everyday handgun. Fifth round, another person, they get to fucking kind of see, now it's a battle of persuasion to see if you can get them on your side. How much more exciting would that be to watch? And also, let me tell you something. If you don't think that's going to motivate fighters to go in there round one and fucking smash somebody, <laughs> you're out of your mind. That first round with no weapons is going to be insanity. Now, I know this is fucked up and probably never going to happen, but I guarantee you this is already happening in somewhere in China, somewhere in Russia, and there's like a pay-per-view fucking dark web code you can go on and watch it. Just like the fucking, uh, remember The Condemned? Remember that? The movie of Stone Cold Steve Austin where it's like all these murderers like just killing each other on an island? It's kind of similar to that, but uh, fuck, I'd watch it. Get a link, fucking link me it. I'd watch that. I think it's fucking madness. Also, a little more. Oh, that just that just reminded me of a conversation I had. Okay, so all the crew, all the true crime shit, right? I was talking to my uncle Pee Wee about this, and he goes, "Yeah, like because we talked about how it's kind of victim families are just like you know, fuck you. We're just gonna focus on this terrible person, this killer." And he goes, and then I was debating like, "Yeah, you should probably shoot them in the head and not bother with like giving them all their shit." Like, put him in jail for life. It's like, why? You shoot him in the head, end it. Let's move on. And he goes, imagine this. Imagine you give... Uh, you give the fucking... Families of the victim... The killer. And they can do whatever they want to him. Now, that's probably already a fucking movie. It sounds like something straight of a fucking movie. But that, to me, seems fair. Because I bet you get some families who are like, you know super religious or just kind of gentle who would like forgive him be like oh forgiveness is the only way and then he'd go and kill like another family and it'd be like oh you fucked up and other families would just be fucking savages which would be another pay-per-view idea so fucking filled with ideas this week um uh, it's a su super bowl is coming up to transition to some lighter uh sports talk i'm not gonna spend too much time on this super bowl i picked the matchup niners chiefs red on red it's going to be a great Super Bowl. I personally have the Niners winning. I think they're the best team. But Mahomes is a psycho and could just rattle off and maybe win them the game. But I think the Niners will probably win. And I think all the pressure's on the Chiefs with Andy Reid and stuff. Cause it's like, hey, this guy just has to win. Well, the Niners is our, were like a terrible team last year. And they're just starting. Everyone's young on their team. So I think the pressure's on the Chiefs. And I think the Niners will win. But that's my Super Bowl prediction. But I remember one time, I remember I was like 10 years old and I was talking to, I don't know who I was talking to, but I, I was talking and I was like, they're like, would you rather go to the Super Bowl or go to the Pro Bowl? And I was like, oh, by a mile, the Pro Bowl. Because I could see all my favorite players then. Talk about freezing cold takes. Who the fuck would rather see the shitty bullshit Waste of time money grab known as the Pro Bowl of just fucking anybody who can make it and sell some bullshit weird jerseys to kids for a team that they're, they're not going to hit, they're not going to do anything, they're not going to even try hard compared to a, a historic Super Bowl. Freezing cold take as a kid and I'm still fucking 
bitter at myself for not having the intelligence to see that one through. If you like what you saw, give the video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, subscribe, DM me, shoot me an email, send me an e-transfer, hook me up.